The Glitz Attraction is a skate room Fire to Freddy's, and is in my opinion one of the best Fire to Freddy's fan games. It's a super fun game, having to run around and avoid all the threats and deal with everything while completing all the puzzles. But what if you couldn't run? Well, in this video, that's what we're going to find out. So what are the rules for this challenge? Well, it's quite simple. I'm not allowed to run at any point during any of the levels, and I have to beat the entire game. I also have to beat the game on normal difficulty, which means that the game has limited checkpoints, meaning I will have to beat most levels in one go. So let's not wait any longer and begin. So is it possible to beat the Glitz Attraction without running? So for starters, a quick gameplay explanation for those who have no idea what this game is. In the Glitz Attraction, our goal is to survive, well, the Glitz Attraction. Completing the six main levels that this game has for us in order to win. Pretty standard stuff. All the levels are designed like an escape room with various puzzles you need to complete to win. So we start the game by paying the staff bot $15 to let us in and also take all of our belongings. Great, so 30 seconds into this game and I've effectively been mugged. Fantastic. <laughs> Afterwards we get a tutorial on how the monitors work. All you need to know is that these monitors give us clues to beat each of the levels, but they aren't important so I won't be mentioning them ever again. Afterwards we get to watch the original Fire to Freddy's 1 crew perform and receive a flashlight for listening to their song. Afterwards, we crawl into an event where the door for the freedom is shut behind us. Oh boy, we then get a message on how to sprint using shift, so I remove the shift key from my keyboard since we won't be running. We then crawl through until we enter the first level. Nightmares is the first level, which is based off the Fire to Freddy's 4 location. You will notice the theme where every level is based off one of the games as we go on. To beat this level, we have to complete the Freddy puzzle on the wall, including the missing piece which can only be obtained by unlocking a box with two keys found in random drawers. Afterwards, the picture will reveal a code which we can then put into a safe in the bedside drawer, allowing us to obtain a hammer, which we can use to pull the nails out of the boards, blocking the closet door and allow us to escape. This is probably the most straightforward out of all the levels, however considering that I can't run, I have to complete this quite slowly, which gives way to the four or five main threats to kill us. Starting with Nightmare Balloon Boy, who will get up from his chair and kill you if you don't flash him with your flashlight when he starts waking up. Keeping up with the flashing of the characters, Freddles will appear around the room from time to time and you need to flash them in order to keep them from causing you to just die of insanity. Nightmare Leon is probably the easiest to deal with. Every now and again they will enter the room through a hole in the wall above the bed and you need to put on the Golden Freddy suit to hide from them. They will make their presence known with the droning noise and tentacles coming out of the wall, so yeah, if you die to them then you're just not paying attention. That leaves Nightmare Fredbear, who is probably the most annoying character in this level. Every once in a while, Fredbear will appear at the window and if you don't close the curtain, he enters Ignited Freddy style and kills you. The problem is, is that he moves silently and his timer is kind of strict, so not being able to run merit that I wasn't always able to reach him in time and he would end up killing me. I should also mention that Nightmare Bonnie is in this level, but he only appears if you let the alarm clock hit 12 o'clock, which I never knew, or when you finish the level and are leaving, so he's never a problem. This level took a couple of tries, but it was all over in about 10 minutes. This game can sometimes decide to give you a break and basically just give you a free pass, but this level is so easy regardless, and it really wasn't that much of a hassle. Nightmare Fredbear was the only real issue, but he only killed me once or twice. Before we move on, I want to quickly talk about the movement itself. Obviously not being able to run makes this game kind of a slog, but this game has diagonal moving which lets you move slightly faster. It's still not as fast as running, but it just makes the run a little bit better. But anyways, enough of that, on to level 2. Toys is the Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 inspired level, and it's probably my favourite level in this game, unlike the game that's inspired from. However, this was the first level that truly gave me problems with this challenge, and it all has to do with one character. But beforehand, a quick explanation on what you need to do. This level is split into two parts. Part 1 requires you to find sticky notes, which spell a code derived of symbols, which opens up a door, which allows you to turn on the room's power. Part 2 is finding 5 gears, which you need to power a switch, which opens the door to your freedom. Part 1 has two characters to deal with, while Part 2 has an extra one character to deal with. The first of the Part 1 characters, and the one that I had the least difficulty dealing with overall, was Mangle. Mangle will randomly drop down from one of the four vents around the room, and if they see you at all from either of their two heads, it's just over. However, Mangle gives you a lot of notice with super loud vent noises, which tell you to either get out of the area or hide in a locker. 
I never once died to Mangle in this run, and honestly, yeah, Mangle's pretty easy to deal with. However, the same cannot be said for Toy Chica, the single most annoying character in this entire run. Well, at least for now. Toy Chica will walk around the room, randomly turning around, and repeats this until she spots the player. Then, she will sprint towards them and kill you if she catches you. She's kind of scattered brain and is normally easily juked and is kind of pathetic. However, when you're stripped of your ability to run, she becomes the new Mangle. If Toy Chica sees you at all, your run is pretty much over. She will always catch you if she sees you, and she can see you from the entire side of the hallway, which makes her a pain, especially in part 2, where you have to deal with Withered Freddy, who takes over the puppets mechanic where you need to wind up their music box to prevent them from breaking free. However, unlike the puppet, if you wind his music box too much, he breaks out anyway. I guess our tunes are a bit... bad or something. If he breaks free, then he blocks the room with the gears, and yeah, again, it's pretty much over. This level was surprisingly tough, especially part 2, where you had to slowly dance around Chica and basically slowly follow her around the room in order to make any progress with the gears. This in turn made Withered Freddy harder to deal with, as you couldn't get to him as much as you normally could while running. A lot of my attempts ended because Chica just moved so slow that I couldn't make it to the box and Freddy would just run out. Remember too that I need to stay behind her because she can literally see me from across the map. Now this was already bad enough since having to slowly walk around the map made this level a slog to get through, but then there were the moments where Chica decided to bust us and turn around. This was single handedly the number one way I would die in this level. Quite a few times I managed to get all the gears and just needed to get back to place them and then Chica would just randomly turn around at the last minute while I tried to wind Freddy so he wouldn't kill me and just end my run. This level was extremely slow and painful, but it became considerably easier once I changed my strategy. Originally I tried to take my time and this resulted in terrible late game RNG because I'd be dancing around taking risks in order to get Freddy wound up and find myself getting punched. I also found out that the opposite side of hall from where Freddy was, was a death trap. So my strategy became to grab all the gears from that side first, as fast as I possibly could, so I could get comfy in the main hall. And this made the nights so much easier, and I more consistently got all the gears and eventually I managed to get the dub and complete this level without running. But trust me, it doesn't get any easier from here. Also, f*** you Toy Chica. Cursed is the Final Fantasy 3 level, and I will be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this one, you'll see why soon. But let me explain the goal. We first have to find a code which we can put into this panel so we grab a coin, which we can then use on the arcade machine. We then have to beat the game and use the code given to use afterwards to get a key which unlocks the vent we need to escape from the inevitable fire that will take over this place. Unlike the previous level, we have a time limit, which is stressful when you can't run. This level requires a lot of running back and forth from the different areas of the room to deal with threats, and this was the first sign of things to come. Not managing to make it to doors or switches caused me to die quite a bit. Now, this level only has two ways you can die. Well, there is a third way with Phantom Foxy, but you literally have to let him jump scare you like five times. So, yeah, either you're really dumb or, you know, you just want to die. Dreadbear is the easiest of the two characters to deal with. He sometimes decides to enter the room, and when he does, we have to hide under the desk on the side that he's on to prevent him from seeing us. He will also destroy any closed doors, so be careful of that. Dreadbear can be annoying if you don't check your cameras, but otherwise it'll be fine. Springtrap, however, is easily the biggest challenge in this level, and that's mainly because he has one of the most complicated AIs out of any character in this entire game. He has a total of 5 ways to attack. He can come from either door and enter any of the three vents. Two again lead to the doors, but the third leads to your room, where you need to shut off the power and hide under your desk until he leaves. To be honest, every character on their own wasn't an issue. It's dealing with all the characters on top of the arcade machine, and considering we don't have the luxury of speeding back and forth, staying on top of where everyone is has to be the most important thing. The good thing is the arcade machine will glitch whenever a character moves, so we do have a good way of knowing when to check cams. But at the same time, if RNG screws us over, the characters can move before we actually get to the machine, so they could have moved to a new camera or to a door and we don't know because we are moving so slowly between sections. However, despite all that, this level was so much easier than the previous one. 
However, this level was home to the worst glitch, which got me killed right at the very end. I had completed the entire level and was just waiting for the vent to open after the scripted dialogue, and it didn't open which got me killed. And this level requires you to complete it all in one shot, and this level just drags on. So I did beat this level twice, and for what happened, I think it might have been because I was too close to the vent, but I really don't know. But besides that rage inducing moment, this level wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, despite its challenges, and we move on to arguably the most frustrating level for all the wrong reasons. After watching Springtrap f***ing die, we enter the Fun Times level. Fun Times is probably one of my favourite levels for its unique concept of having to build Circus Baby while dealing with all the threats. Now, I want to take this opportunity to talk about one issue this game seriously has, and I have never seen anyone talk about it. And just to let you know, this really had nothing to do with the challenge at all, but it is actually a massive issue. For those who don't know, I suffer from mild trinopia, which is a form of colour blindness. And luckily for me, this game has a colour blind mode, which is great, and something that a lot of games like Poppy Playtime never had, which made me just really hate the experience. However, the colorblind mode somehow glitches out and doesn't work with the color based challenge. Take the color matching puzzle in this level, for example. I have this pattern completed with the filter on because, y you know, I need it. And it says that I am wrong with 10 senses being correct, which means that the filter doesn't work at all, which makes this level impossible for me to do without a ton of guessing or with some help, which my lovely stream chat ended up doing. But this is a huge issue and one that needs to be fixed as it does limit your audience. But anyways, let's talk about this night and the actual no running challenge instead of my disabled ass. So in this level, we have to build Circus Baby to win. Pretty simple. Except every limb has to be fused with a variety of puzzles. The head needs us to repeat numbers, the arms require us to connect lines in a maze, and the legs have that stupid colour puzzle I mentioned earlier. Now onto the three main threats of this challenge. Ballora can appear from either one side of the two hallways behind you. And you can tell which side she's coming from by listening to her music box and what side of the room it's panned to. Depending on what side she's on, you need to use the Tesla coils to shock her and repel her back. Funtime Freddy is probably the easiest, needing you to look at him through the window and use the tape to lure him back to the stage if he leaves. However, he only really does this like once a night, and so rarely, so normally you'd never have to use the tape. If you use the tape too many times when you don't need to, he will literally smash the shit out of Bon Bon and kill you. Funtime and Foxy will randomly make a whopping sound in which you need to shock them with the shock gun to stop them corrupting. If you shock them too many times when you don't need to shock them, they kill you. Foxy can also juke you and wob for no reason, which really does nothing for gameplay except just store you. Now everything on their own is actually really really easy, and besides that one puzzle, I would argue that this level, while probably being the most RNG based, is actually the easiest. What makes it so challenging during no running is just how far away everything is. Like with the curse level, not reacting immediately to any threat can result in death. However, I found this level was really easy for this challenge, and I beat it on the first try. Although I did get stuck for a while with that stupid puzzle. Once again, huge thanks to chat for helping me out with this challenge. I should mention too that I stream this challenge live on this channel, and I'll be starting to do that with any new challenges that I do. So be sure to subscribe to be there for those. Anyways, on to probably the hardest level in this entire challenge. After the fun time level, we go down the sister location elevator, which gets disconnected by the little shits, and after experiencing massive head trauma, and probably some extreme external and internal injuries, considering how much blood is here, how are we still alive, we enter the next level, known as Lost Media. This level only has one animatronic, Enid, who is tired of Toy Chica as probably the most difficult animatronic to deal with in this entire run. Enid is hard to deal with while running, so he's pretty much straight up impossible in no running. If I'm being honest, I wasn't sure how much of this game would actually be possible when I first thought of it, but I did think that if this run was going to die at all, it would be here. Enid is just on another level. If he sees you at all, it's over. What's more is that he can hear everything, especially your flashlight. So if you even get near him, then whoops, it's over. Now this level is actually pretty straightforward, even though it gives you literally no clues on what to do. Well, I mean it does, but like whatever. Find a crowbar to retrieve a keycard from John's desk. Then activate the generator using the keycard and complete three battery puzzles and escape. Pretty simple. This level is, like, like I said, pretty simple. 
And the hardest part for me, at least, is the first part in finding the keycard, just simply because I got lost. Now, how did beating this without running actually go? Well, despite everything I just said, it actually went way better than I thought. See, Enid can hear you running, but isn't as good as hearing you walk. Not to mention that sneaking around the very loud Enid isn't as hard as you actually think. Once you turn the generator on, completing the batteries isn't that bad, besides the stupid colorblind mode bullshit. And besides one spot where Enid can crash the party, he seems incapable of going to any of the other sections unless he hears you. This level is all about being patient and taking your time, just like this entire challenge. But this is really the only level where the entire game has absolutely no time limit. Well, I guess besides fun times, but still. You can sit and patiently wait for Enid to leave and take as long as you want. In other words, just take it slow. And this didn't take as long as I thought. Once I got the checkpoint in this level, which happens after the generator by the way, I didn't have many problems. It was just the first part that was kind of annoying. So with that, the supposedly hardest challenge is done, and we move on to the final level. So when I said that Enid was the hardest, I obviously lied. But here we have probably the biggest issue and honestly a bit of a roadblock to the challenge. The back alley is inspired by Pizza Sim, which is a game I have some problems with, but this level is probably one of my favourites, during normal gameplay. In no running, this level is nothing short of a fucking slog, since in normal there are no checkpoints. The big issue with this level is that to get from one section to the other takes so long that it's very easy for threats to sneak up on you without realising. And like with every single enemy in this game, if they get a chance to kill you, they will and it's pretty much over. So let's go over the final level and what is so hard about it. To complete this level, you need to complete two outdoor puzzles, a pizza sim minigame and a match the face puzzle. Completing these two gives you access to a projector room and gives you a coin, which when using on the Rockstar Free animatronic, Let's you use pieces of paper to assemble a poster, which once assembled, help you has to check if it's good, and if so, gives you access to metal clippers, which you can use to cut the chain to the fence and finally escape. Now once again, this level is timed, and while you have an impressive 12 minutes to complete everything, this level, when not running, does a good job at pushing this boundary. Now there are three main threats. Scrap Baby comes from the woods, and you need to use the repel to, well, repel her. By the way, everything's on a maintenance panel, by the way. Scraptrap, who is meant to be Springtrap, but I mean, I understand why he's here since. I always come back. Anyway, so Scraptrap will slowly stand up and come for you since. I always come Anyways, you need to close the door and call him back to the chair. He's kind of annoying, but honestly, not that bad. The real issue of this challenge is Molten Freddy. Molten Freddy appears in the vents, and you just need to repel him with the light. This isn't that bad on its own. But when you're in the projector room on the other side of the map, trying to reach him is almost impossible. Even with the red flashing light in the projector room, which means that someone is moving, the time gap to stop Freddy is so tight that it's nearly impossible. So is this it? Did I come all this way just to fail at the final stretch? I'm out of time. Music Man's gonna get me. Yes. No way. <gasps> My God, run, run, run. I should have closed the door, but I don't care. Fucking run or we'll walk, slowly walk. No way! We did it! With less than 30 seconds to spare, we had done it. After escaping, we find ourselves in a scooping room where Vanny knocks us out, takes us to Burn Trap, Jesus Christ, and he kills us or scares us, I don't know. We are then thrown into a series of rooms where we witness frames of the FNAF 4 bite. Was that the bite of 87? And then we find the Fredbear plush. 
and then Fredbear. And with that, it is officially possible to beat the Glitz Attraction without running. This challenge was actually heaps of fun and I'm really starting to get into fan games. So if you guys have any challenges for any other games, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for 12,000 subscribers. You guys are insane. Keep it up. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.